the public broadcaster was set up. I mean, okay, I won't use the word public broadcaster. It was state broadcaster in 1935-36, set up by the British, obviously to uh, to further the cause of the empire in the east. Today it has 421 actually stations in Delhi and 23 languages. This is about I'm talking about the radio part. Uh, and it speaks in 176 dialects and languages every day. That is the dimension of India. Color TV is when it all began, the story begins. It starts in 1982 with the Asian Games. TV now has 23 channels, 67 production centers. Now all, like all public broadcasts uh, that are not BBC, they are basic. And in India, as you just observed, that when you have a proposal, it's thinly spread. Besides, I'll make it very clear in the beginning, the entire bureaucracy moved from the state radio and state TV to man the positions. And having worked with my comrades, I'm aware of the complexities of imagination and everything. The way it so in 97, that's about 20 years ago, it moved from state control to public broadcasting. Okay, now let's get to some of the uh, reasons for the success of failures. One is just remember public broadcasters have a definite mandate. And in a highly sensitive country like India, everything of the public broadcaster comes up for debate in parliament. So the rainbow opinion of India has to be somehow kept. Something that appears disrespectful of our moral standards or something just out. So you much rather play safe and that makes it a little, little too mundane at times. So subjects covered are often less colorful, yet dire needed because we take on subjects that others would choose to ignore. Or we look at, we, oh sorry, I shouldn't say we are retired, but <laughs> we are they. Let's start using they. They take out subjects like social empowerment, like a lot of subjects that others would not find sexy enough. Okay, even on an issue like rape, which has grabbed the headlines in India, the difference between the public broadcaster and the private has been, while until the Ministry of Information really went hard after them, Every case was sensationalized to the extent of going and sticking the microphone into the poor girl's palm or asking all sorts of questions that one shouldn't ask in public. She's traumatized anything. The way we looked at the public broadcast uh, is to give a brief mention. Now that's not covered. And then concentrate on the punishments in previous cases and keep rolling them up in the loop. The idea was to go in for retribution rather than this thing. So there is a bit of a slant, but it's very subtle, very nuanced, and sometimes lost. Viewers are viewed as citizens, not customers. Now you can afford to do it, because half your budget comes from the government, which is again a subject on which however sensitive and touch. It depends on public funding. Now, Public broadcasters are two categories. One is those who get public funding, which is irrespective of how nice you are, as long as you're effective. Because at the end of the day, if you're not effective, we'll, we'll haul you in parliament, a bigger national forum. And the other one is one that is over-dependent. So right in the beginning, I'm raising an issue, an issue which I have raised with my colleagues. I have a take uh, opportunity of working as the Ministry's Secretary, so I know what that viewpoint is. Having worked with my colleagues and their, how do work with it? We have diplomats here, uh, and they have suffered what I call the hegemonic genes of the Indian bureaucracy. So I know how the section of the says, Sir, this has to be looked after. This is sort of crossing the red line. I would like to ask them who gave them the power of the red line and the green line, but never mind. 
So the issue now is if the public broadcaster has to perform the way it did over the first 30 years, it has to have a more modernistic outlook. So, but then, let me get on to introducing India in two minutes for those who don't know. 1947, we had 22 languages. We have 24 now, officially. Six religions. Regional identity was supreme. I was born within a few years of independence, and I remember every person was addressed as this and that, and the Bengalis, that my people have a funny way of addressing every North Indian as Hindustani. So, so they have, they, they make it to excesses, that they belong to India. So we were born in that, and in this contesting regional, regional uh, dimension, Hindi, which was the only majority language, was not even accepted as a lead language. I remember the debates when it was supposed to be put up in the national language. I said, no, we don't accept. So today it's an official language. It's official language committee, it's official language. Till today, it's not declared as a national language. But well, what's more interesting is that even the spread of it as a link language was opposed in when we are state. And some other states they burned buses. So, this was a condition of the dynamics between the centrifugal and the centripetal forces in the 50s and 60s. Yet, it was found that the same masses went in for Hindi films. Now, Hindi films are not actually Hindi films. They, they speak a language that would horrify a professor of Hindi even us. They speak Laprakya. So they, they speak their own language. They have invented a language like babies often do. Spontaneous, they understand each other. And as a counter joke to this, we had in the regions of India a joke about the news in Hindi. There was an hour when we were spoken that now please listen to the news in Hindi. And we would mimic it and say, Please listen to Hindi in the news because that's the only time we don't understand that Hindi. So here was the official attitude of you better learn the right language, and there was the mass response of we swing, we dance, we speak the way we move, and if you don't like us, don't look at us. That's it. Now this is the time that the radio had to take a very critical choice, and in very short, the story begins in 19. 52, when the radio, the, the, the state radio decides that Hindi film music or Hindi films are kitsch, are degrading. So we concentrate on classical. Now I have a lot of work on this that I published school. And the information minister, in collusion, I'm sorry, in cooperation, not collusion, in cooperation with the bureaucracy, decides that is bad. We shouldn't allow our population to be polluted. So what happens in 1952? A young man with imagination joins a private company called Binaka and starts the Binaka Ilmala, which was the popular relay of Hindi songs. Now you see the tragedy. It had to be done from Ceylon, Sri Lanka, to reach India. It took about five years for my former colleagues to see the writing on the wall and that entire transition uh, archives are with me. So in 1957, the government of India turned around and declared, okay, 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 it's not that bad. We can have some of this street in me. There was no stopping this. 57 it started, by 67 there was an exponential increase and for every distant corner of India, it was this popular music that was built in up. 62 was a war that called for a sufficient dose of patriotism in all corners, and 62 was the year when Jayamala started, which is another popular scene. The short point I'm making is in exactly 30 years, Link Hindi was accepted by all non Hindi states. I'm saying all. All. There are states on the periphery, like, uh, sorry, on the perimeter, like Arunachal, like in Ladakh, where Hindi is a language, state language. When you have two million languages, they use Hindi. So the short point I'm getting 
is that this exponential reach of Hindi film music as entertainment was the contribution of the public trade. Okay, I can go over figures. We have theatrical releases, then we have the numbers of gramophones and records sold. So we can multiply and we have extrapolated figures to see that even theatrical releases and the music that was sold on records could hardly reach about 40-60% of India. How is it that every Indian was stepping? This happened through the medium of the radio. And having gone on the past records, I know that the radio was had what is called the demand for content and content whom we made overnight on newsly budgets. So all you could do is to engage them in a pact, in, in, a, in an agreement, the gramophone companies, and play them over and over again for a few cents. The system continues, it's gone electronic, but still called needle loves. So the other thing in the other success of the public media was in strengthening the democracy. Now, please realize that from Casablanca, from Morocco to Philippines, the only nation, and I'm proud to say, the only nation where the tanks have never rolled out of the barracks except on Republic Day, right, is India. Every nation, take the sweep of North Africa, West Asia, go on over the Indian subcontinent, go on to Central Asia, move on through Thailand, Myanmar, all the way to Philippines. The only nation where the military has never been allowed to step out was India. And among those, there's a separate discourse on this. One of the reasons was the continuous hammering. Now, where exactly was the real afraid? I'll explain. Every five years, every four years, every three years, we had problems with some state where some group said boycott Indian elections, boycott elections. We'll kill you if you go out to vote. Kashmir, it happened again and again. There are other states, I remember Punjab, where we have to actually elect people to organize. It was the voice of the radio that went on saying, please go out, nothing has happened. Is 35 percent voting going on at 12 o'clock? This was a human role. This is a role that's under, it's underestimated, it's not understood. The last elections will explain to you how the matrix democracy works. 543 seats, 8,000 candidates, 464 political parties, 550 million voters actually are dropped out using 1 million voting machines. EVM means electronic voting machines. Can you see the matrix of this issue? And so the expenditure like our expenditure rocket, others will be far less than what others would have to pay. It's in the discourse of democracy, and as they put it in rather colloquial saying, they converted the voters from sheep to lion. When I use these terms, they're denigrating terms, but the first three elections. Whoever studied popular elections in India would know that between 52 and 67, voters were actually herded by political parties, by ex royals, and told whom to vote. The fact that our Prime Minister won through a landslide majority in 2014 and his opposition party won through a landslide majority in the next year shows what is in it. So, the role of the public broadcaster is, and as I said, during violence and threats, it played its role. I remember when it's a part of the tradition of the radio and TV to stay in office. I mean, every media man needs to stay in office once in a while. But to stay in an office throughout that period of 10 to 15 days, and somebody supplies food, because you dare not go out. You represent rape, you shoot. Only one nation I reiterate where no military intervention is that. Now it's it's been simplistic to join two and two into four, 
but there are lines where I can draw the connection at any point if anyone, because I would leave behind my email ID. Economic success. And I remember during the 62 war, 1962 war, and in 1964 65, when we had this unfortunate business with Pakistan, we were from ship to mouth. Real 480 grains would be, public law 480 grains would be coming to India, and that literally from this, dockyards to the mouth, that was it. In 65, one of our prime ministers raised this slogan grow more food, etc. But if you can't translate a public policy through a clumsy state machinery in a heterogeneous country with all its diversity, unless there's a sense of mission, unless you have strategies. And one of the strategies was to use the diversity of the radio. For instance, the TV. This is the world's longest program that goes on every day in the afternoon. On air since 67, uh, I think the mousetrap, I got a crystal mousetrap, we'll have to compare and find out. Okay, it, which is 89% of India's population, even those who don't like to watch dull TV, as they put it, actually switch it on during that time. And it's a vital tool for agricultural knowledge. India, with never decreasing numbers, 1.3 billion exports food after feeding its population. Now one of the reasons for this turnaround has been better agriculture, but the knowledge of better agriculture is there. Again, I would put it this thing, that it's very easy to draw inferences, very difficult to prove them, but even the inferences don't come in academic analysis on these lines unless pointed out. A point I missed out there relates to the radio school and one more role of the television. In the Indian television, uh, state television, no, sorry, not state, public television now, depends heavily on terrestrial towers. Now, terrestrial towers, because of their diversity and their location, they have 1400 towers, actually meant theoretically that you could concentrate on 1400 local areas. A new term was invented that, that you may not have heard. It's called narrow casting. You delete the entire satellite, uh, you delete the entire terrestrial setup from the linkages, shut down the linkages, they become standalone broadcasters. They go only up to this portion, and that's all. They can only go up to the real portion of the coverage. That gave an advantage of reaching out the difficult to penetrate areas in the easiest language possible, that is local dialects. It was a Herculean task. The agriculture scientists may come and tell you, okay, this is the soil condition, this is what you've got to do. But to then to translate it into the local dialect and to reframe it and then slice and chop it, produce it on a daily basis for years together, until they say, ha, don't reach, I know. These are some of the, the other thing was, what was the Indian nation? As I said, in Calcutta they said, Hindustani. To bring the concept of Hindustan onto the, every heart, every, every, everywhere. The National Day celebrations and others. This is not unique to the public broadcast in India. The task of the task of the mammoth size was unique. This is where and three one wars came in between they kindled their natural rules of patriotism that come in at that time. But sports now India is not a sporting nation. We don't need to discuss it. 1.3 billion can produce a team of 11 soccer players. <laughs> we have other nations. No, no, we have it. One of them is we went exposed. Now every kid started watching TV and the excitement of games actually came up through the crescendo that went on radio. The ball coming in, what? So you, the ball, <laughs> will you be able to score the ball? This injection had it begun about 100 years ago, would have beaten Brazil all over now. Anyway. <laughs> 
So national unity through news. That's another thing that people hardly know. This is, was an official secret till I we decided to bring it out. The entire news of the national level in India, in every language, is actually done in Delhi. So every language news, there are language news rooms. The certain discourse is worked out. They quickly send for translation. They give 20 minutes for translation into Tamil, Telugu, whatever, whatever. 25 minutes, it's screened through. Here is the Tamil news for the nation. And it's not read from Chennai. It's read from Delhi. It's really profound. So in case you thought that the news of your state actually was read in fluent Malayali, was from your state, you are mistaken. It's all done from Delhi. So there was a centralizing thing that the British introduced, British introduced and continued. But actually, this monopoly ensured some amount of uniformity and reliability because whenever there was a crisis, open the radio. Don't rush for the brink. Open the radio. Uh, public TV news withstood competition. And part of it is the usual thing that the others were colorful, yet sensational. This one may be boring, but well, it says more or less. And what is the purpose of this news? Let me give you one example. Manipur is one of our small states, and I don't I use the term small state in Europe with a lot of caution. They have only 30 million people. <laughs> only. And we have to deliver news in one language in 29 dialects. So that's 30 news every day. Every day in what is known as the tiny state of Manipur. Pardon the uh, numbers. So that's it. That's the type of task that no ZTV or no other private TV can ever do, will ever do, because there is no ad at the end of it coming in. The information service, of course, calls for it. One of the lasting tragedies of my country, because I've seen the entire transition, is that same bureaucracy that was required to hold the nation together has completely outlived its utility, and I've been saying this in public, yet managed to become secretary for no part of mine. Then these health campaigns, our neighbors still have polio, smaller ones. These sort of campaigns were carried on vigorously, vigorously, whether you liked it or not, you could switch it off. 1.3 billion, and that same applies for smallpox, that applies for a lot of other things, but polio has been one of the greatest successes. The Pakistan has it, Bangladesh has it, others have it. Repeated campaigns, they can't say that, oh, the Muslims are so conservative, they don't listen. We have the largest segment of Muslims. Shut up. Do your work properly. That's all. All you needed was Muslim stars who went up and said that that drop is not going to be poison, it might save you. Look what your child would look like. Repeated campaigns, health campaigns, vaccines, hygiene. Of course, every, every public broadcaster does it. I am referring to the degree of success and the magnitude of the problem, the number of languages. That's all. Even if, every broadcaster does it, maybe Hungarian radio does it, but when you think of the number of languages of delivery, that is bad. Then we have in the, in the last five, seven years, this uh, employment guarantee schemes that they come over. But the most important thing is, apart from the number of people covered, the sudden economic injection, the present Prime Minister's emphasis, there are many issues, but one of the emphasis that we raise is DBT, Direct Benefits Transfer. So the entire bureaucracy and their minions and the middlemen and the systems looters, the bed bugs of the system were eliminated in one shot. One shot. But that this shot is available, that this right belongs to you and how you can go about it had to be done as a free campaign. Who else can do it? This entire thing, this middleman thing, and my heart leaps because when I joined service about 41, 42 years ago, this ubiquitous middleman was something to tear your hair. The only thing you can do because whatever goes through is like passing water through a layer of sand. It just goes away. 
there somewhere. All your personal honesty things matter as long as the system didn't work. So these are cost down BN is from billion to 250,000 ATMs usage. So these are the numbers and post offices of course. Cash in hand as an empowerment of the poor. Now there are other issues but I'll rush to it. Gender, because I'll leave behind this and the fact that India's population has finally, finally flattened out is also largely. But I must focus now. The right to information is now taken as a fundamental right. This is one of the strongest weapons introduced, but now let me get to the failures because I've been talking as if this is God's first child. Now, listen, the failures are also there. The public broadcaster failed to secure its autonomy and professionalism. There is an aura about subservience about which I must write something. The boss looks so damn sweet. Whatever he says is music. It happens everywhere, it's a psychic. Like now that sort of thing, <sighs> I've described it in three words. Bureaucracy, bureaucrats. I tore my hair and I decided four and a half days is enough. Please have my papers. I can't live with this anymore. Boy, I mean, it's enough. Because at every step, if somebody has some kid has to go to a flood affected or riot affected situation, instead of giving permission on the Mobile, a file is processed. So, file is processed. I mean, then comes the powerful democratic unions of India. 55,000, 52,000 employees, 42 major unions. I was spending half my time talking to the unions and half the time listening. and then some overtime work. They would not allow any lateral entry of professionals. Sometimes I prayed for a market infection. No, I am left of like every sensible person in left of center, but sometimes you wish market infection or something like that. Yeah. Uh, unions against. No fresh blood came up 25 years. So the young man moving around Dordarshan is 56 years old. Anyway, related, this was one of the things we could get it done. Uh, tensions with ministers and my younger colleagues notwithstanding. They saw the light of the day and the first brush, first flush of young men and women are coming in. And now the complaint is, why don't they wear proper dresses? And why do they talk so? So much like you. Okay, so this is a native broadcaster and so the initiative and latest program, so these are some of the classic failures. These can be rectified and I'm glad to say that before I left, the minister had an arrangement by saying, okay, let the old man go, but since he had max to prime, let's see if we can do some of these things. So that itself makes a life worth it. No revenue orientation. How on earth do you run a broadcaster where people say it's beneath my dignity to earn revenue? I have a revenue. I'm going to go and ask like a mercenary for revenue. That's how on earth do you do it? So when I when we introduced the concept about five years ago of uh, what do you call it? Commercial time, free commercial time, paid commercial time. They look blank at me. I said, okay, let me get external assistance, marketing voice. They said, no, you can't. I said, I will. You can't. So the next day, the unions would come up. So these, this is how India functions. But remember, at the end of the day, this functioning notwithstanding, it has the highest GDP growth. It has, it's not a ballet dancer. It's a bit like an elephant dancing. It has its own tunes, but it still takes. Here, among this thing, of course, I'm bringing them down in a summary. The next one in failure is not being able to explain to the powers that be 
what is funding, what is scale, what are you talking about, why don't you have an Indian window somewhere in Overhangi, Overhangi, I mean, why don't you? So these are the levels of funding. Japan, something close to 7,000 million euro. I put it in billion because I can't put billions in India. So, and then if you have UK, the much wanted BBC, 5,600 million euro. Germany, 7,000 million euro. That's only half of it. I'm talking about Deutsche Welle. You know the external arm. I'm not even talking of ART, the internal arm. I don't know where the Germans get so much. <laughs> India, 675 million euro. I have to put million because millions would. <laughs> so, this is it. This is it. So, you pay peanuts, you get peanut eaters. <laughs> so, these are some of the issues that have bothered. Right now it's a survival that is in question, more of the relevance that is in question. The first part of the task to go for India is, doesn't doubt itself, its solidarity is beyond questions, its national everything is beyond question. What next? What next? I would submit, I just won't interview now, but I said, the public broadcaster's role needs to be receded somewhat, but how do you withdraw from the regions? Because the moment you withdraw, somebody from the public sphere says, ha ha, so I am not important. I am not important. And yet, if you spread it too thinly, it doesn't work. There needs to be, I have given a plan for right sizing. But then focus. What bothers the Indian today is I get my entertainment anyway. What? How do I? B comes the question, and to give credible news, you gotta be credible. <laughs> First, you can't wag and then say, "Look, I'm liberal." People don't believe. So you have to. That distinction is is a necessity for the Indian nation. It's not a question of who feels what about it, whether I like this thing or I don't like it. There are certain national necessities, like the emergence of Kaluki Hindi. It's a national necessity. That is one. And the last point that I will mention is about the digital and social media. I didn't raise it as a public success, as a success or a failure purposely because why one could tear hair. Right now, there is a lot of appearance of the public broadcast in the social media. In fact, the entire MSM, the mainstream media and others are all parts to the same question as to who or what is this new creature and how do we go for the job. So you can't single them out. The BBC was smart during the uh, last Olympics. It decided to go digital. Mercifully, everything is possible during Olympics. It's almost like a war. Got away with it. Got away with it. So, we need an emergency like that to get things done. BBC is far ahead in, in, in digital and the Germans are. But then, digital media and social media are not the same thing. But I don't want to open this discourse now. All I need to say is that that's an area where the survival of the entire media, including the public media, as the alleged voice of reason or the required voice of reason needs to be revived. This is what the public media in India did. I would humbly submit it did it for no fault of mine. So I have no credit. It did it because it did it. All I did was to put a slightly pseudo academic eye to their achievements and try to rationalize with data because the world needs to know the stories that never leave the files and the strongest coffins called files. If ever you want to see the coffin of any good idea, send a letter, we shall start. <laughs>